Okay, recording is started. I always forgot about it uh, in every meeting. <laughs> okay, so what we'll do today? I will, sh I will show you my screen. This is the very typical uh, sentence in past year. Yeah, I will show you my screen. Okay, so here it is. And this is the thing that we will do today. Uh, we will do today uh, this kind of landing page, this very simple uh, page that containing only three sections. Uh, we called it space travels, uh, just to have uh, some theme <laughs> to, to do uh, this kind of uh, web page. We will do this web page on a very special platform that is called Codio. I will uh, pass to you a link URL to this uh, to this platform or the chat here on Zoom because you can do this exercise and this workshop with me. You can do it now uh, along with me or in uh, in the future if you want to just I don't know maybe uh, try do it by your by yourself and stuff like that. You can do it of course later if you want. But you can do it now uh, also. Uh, we will go step by step through all these sections and we will try to do as much as we can in the uh, one and a half uh, hours that we that we can that we have here. So I think the whole meeting will uh, will take something around 90 uh, minutes or so. Okay, so during this workshop, like I said, we will do, that this kind of land landing page landing page is, is something uh, it's a phrase that uh, means the web page that is uh, focused on one thing so for example the landing page in apple website apple it's a very good uh, it's a very good example of landing pages for example they introduced last week the new imax and we have the landing page for the IMAX, the IMAX. So uh, this one site, it's only focused on this one product. We have all the specifications and stuff like that. If we go to the Microsoft site or every single company that is producing something, they have a uh, landing pages. Also, we have landing pages for, uh, for example, if you if you want to invite some someone or some, some people to some kind of event. For example, we want a very simple page with two uh, text forms uh, that uh, users, will, users will provide for us email, for example, and the name. Yes, we want to collect the data and later on send them invites to, to some webinar meeting and, and stuff like that. So this is landing pages are very small, very simple uh, pages that have learned that are focused on one thing. Here we are focused on the space travels. So we have first section. This first section here on the left side, uh, this first part. This is this header section with uh, background, with this uh, night sky, and with uh, text, with the heading text on the center in both uh, axes. So we have a on the vertical in the horizontal axis, we have this uh, centered. Later, the next section is a section with three columns that we want to present some data. Yes, so we want to present uh, some, uh, for example, blog articles or some science articles about the space travels. So we want to have a very nice uh, icon with text with some heading, but smaller than the previous one on the first section. We have some uh, longer text, is a paragraph with text and a button that will, for example, redirect us to the specific blog uh, article. And the last section is a footer section with very simple text uh, here also in, on the center in the horizontal and vertical axis. And it's very similar to the first section, but without any image background, it's only black background with white or some kind of grayish uh, color of text. So what, uh, where we want to start this, this whole things? 
Uh, we will begin with the base HTML and file construction. We'll talk about what the HTML is and what HTML is not, because this is very important. Okay, so what is HTML? Because this is the main language that we will use here today on this uh, on this workshop. Uh, so here you can see here in this first uh, image uh, picture you can see the HTML5 logo. It is the logo type of the HTML5, and here on the bottom you see the very basic example of snippet of code of this HTML language. The, like you can see, it's all uh, in English language. All is uh, prepared with some very weird things that we will talk about uh, later. But how do we call this kind of language? We call it, this is the markup language, uh, because this all things that is containing or it's um, uh, all things that, it, that are building HTML are markups or are tags. We can say uh, about it like a tax, for example. So uh, HTML is built with this kind of markups. So we have head markup, body, P, HTML, title, and stuff like that. And this, this kind of marks, uh, markups or tags uh, are a huge number. But we will talk about a few of them in the next uh, on the next slides. But what is very important that we cannot say that uh, HTML is a programming language. Why we cannot say that it's programming language? Uh, because the HTML has not any logical things inside the language. Uh, what is the logic logical thing or, or logic logical expression? Uh, I mean, for example some kind of conditions. So uh, we want to resolve this kind of problem. We have the application that has two states. One for not logged in users, so just for our guests. So guests all, uh, only are allowed to see, for example, very basic informations, uh, cannot buy products if, for example, is, this is a shop, uh, cannot write a comments or cannot rate a movie or some blog article and stuff like that. But for uh, logged in users that are re uh, registered on our website, we want to show them a little bit more and allow them to do many different things on our site. But plain HTML cannot do it. So on the plain HTML, we cannot say show this part of website only for the logged in users and this part show only for the not logged in users for everyone else for the guests that are coming to our website in html we cannot do it also we all html we cannot uh, do any math uh, operations so for example we cannot uh, click create a calculator yes to to uh, just show the result for example, two times two equals four. We can write it, but hard code it. Just write it like on a word or on some uh, text editor. But oh, sorry. But we cannot uh, show it. We we cannot uh, just do this operation automatically. Like we we cannot say just give me the power of uh, five of some some uh, some number html cannot cannot do it so why we have html uh, when when we are using html so uh, this language is used only for uh, structurized uh, data so we have for example many different users that we want to show to our customer or in our i don't know uh, admin Web page, website of uh, our shop. How can we do it? How to create a table with all our users? Or for example, we have a blog and we want to say that this is a title of, a, of the article. This is a paragraph 
this is an image and this is for example some kind of quiz that we want to uh, show for user on html we we have to describe every single piece of data that our website web uh, web browser for example safari chrome firefox or opera or, or edge uh, there are many different uh, web browsers will understand what this part of our website is so web browser must know if this is the header so this is the title of something this is the table you know, or this is an image yes so we have to specify this this uh, uh, these things that uh, web browser will know what we are going to to do with with this with this website so uh, like this on this uh, green box here on the bottom we can see that html describes a document and creates a logical structure only a structure of all data that we want to show for the user but here on the on the, uh, on the beginning of this slide we 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 also see two different uh, logos we have a css and js and what are these two uh, on this uh, meeting we'll all only talk about html and css and what is the css so if the html is responsible for the structure of the data so css is responsible to uh, make this data beautiful i mean uh, on css we can create many different rules and use many different rules that will for example make this box blue bluish and with this blue border uh, on the all all the sides or for example on css we can make some specific rules that will tell that this box will be green or this picture will be centered or this header here or uh, heading here on the, on the on the top will be gray so this all things uh, connected to text colors backgrounds position of elements of our website css is responsible for all this all the things but we have third technology that we use on the front end. So the front end is the, the things that users is seeing and it's uh, going uh, with uh, in interaction with with this website app or, or uh, any um, or some different thing uh, on the web technologies. But we have this third one. So it's a JavaScript, and the JavaScript is the language, the only language uh that can make our websites and apps dynamic so if we have this case that i said uh, earlier uh that i said before if you want to show something to locked users and to guests of our website the javascript is the language that will can provide us all the informations and all the uh, logical expressions to do these things uh, but JavaScript is a huge topic. It's a huge subject that we uh, are mainly focused on our courses here in Coders Lab. So, uh, yeah, so this all things about JavaScript, uh, you can learn all, all our courses. But here today, we'll only talk about CSS and HTML. Okay, so let's move on to the next, next thing. We'll talk now about the HTML tax because uh, this is the main uh, thing that HTML is built on so it's built on tax uh, it, we have huge number of these tags uh, in HTML and every single tag is responsible for different thing and we have for example this p tag the p tag is representation of the paragraph so we have some kind of uh, some piece of text some uh, longer text not only just few words but uh, in many cases this is the uh, longer part of of text uh, one paragraph 
like I said. And uh, this P tag, it's doing something with our text. And we can, uh, I will show you that in a minute, what uh, in very basic and default way, uh, P is doing with text that inside this tag. But uh, before we do it, we have to talk about the specification, the syntax of the P uh, tags and all of the tags that we have in HTML. So uh, a lot of tags are doing or are, uh, we are writing a lot of tags in HTML in this way. So we have two parts. We have opening tag and we have a closing tag. And what is the difference? And how, how do we write them in a text editor or, or something like that? So we have this very uh, specific bracket. This is called the angle bracket or uh, lower than and greater than sign. So we have these two brackets. And between these brackets, we have some kind of text or a letter. We'll talk about, about what we can put here inside uh, between these uh, brackets later. But here in this example, we have the P. So we, we are creating a paragraph, the P tag. So we have the, these brackets, these angle brackets. Here inside, we have a very specific tag that we want to create. And after we opened this tag, uh, we have to provide some informations, some data. And in, in uh, very common, uh, in, in uh, a lot of cases, that will be just text that we want to show. So we are writing a, some kind of text, writing one, writing one paragraph, and we have to specify and show to our web browser where this paragraph is ending, because we have started it here, but we have to show when, it, when, it, when is the end of this paragraph and maybe when the next paragraph is starting again. So we have to close this tag. And this uh, is making just kind of uh, basic structure of the paragraph. So we have opening tag, text, and the closing tag. And uh, look at this closing tag because it's a little bit different than the opening tag. So we also have these brackets, these angle brackets. We have also this text inside of these brackets, and this is the same as the opening one, but we have this slash thing. So we have this uh, lower than sign slash. We are repeating the same text that we used or the same letter that we used here on the opening tag, and we are closing this tag with this greater than uh, sign. And this is complete, complete tag, complete structure of, of tag of uh, the paragraph. But uh, now I can, I will want to show you uh, what is the difference between uh, writing text just like it is and writing this text with the paragraphs. So here we can we have just we call it a sandbox. So this is just this is the one of many different applications, web applications that is called the CodePen.io, and this is CodePen. This CodePen allows us to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code here inside the browser and have all the results uh, live. Here below, we will see all the things that we will write here in this in this uh, application. This is very useful just to test some things that we want to uh, that we are working on, for example. And we don't, we don't want to uh, open uh, some specific application on our computer, saving things, open that in browser, refreshing. This is complete solution for for this kind of examples. So, for example, we have uh, this kind of text. We have one paragraph of text. And I want to create another paragraph of text. So, in very basic uh, way, uh, I will 
go to the next line yes just like on the word for example we have a word application from microsoft or a uh, google docs and this is very uh normal that we have some kind of text we go we we add uh, we press enter or return and we are going to the next lines and creating another uh another paragraphs but looks look what happened here in the result of this html file we have in on the html file we wanted to have we want to have two different paragraphs but in the result we have one very long line of code that it's uh, uh breaked here but it's breaked only because my uh, uh my uh, screen is not that long so in some in some point this text have to go uh, on the next line like you can see right now but we don't have two different paragraphs the uh, web browser read that as the one big line of code so if we want to separate th these things to make them really two paragraphs we have to use this p tag that we learned uh, before so let's try to do it so in the first line i will do something like this i will create a angle bracket use the p uh, tag close this tag with another uh, bracket and then when we have here this question mark at the end of this paragraph i will close this tag so again we are using this angle bracket slash p angle bracket and what happened now look that here on, on the bottom on the result of this html that we wrote uh just the second uh, uh, just now we have the separation of these two paragraphs we created from this piece of text we created the uh, very specific uh, paragraph and we can see a result here these two pieces of text are separated from each other but the in html only this one is a paragraph and the second one is uh is only just the text so if we put something here some text look that this some text is going here is going beside the our uh, our paragraph not below that so this p tags we have to use again here on the next paragraph so we create p tag and we are closing the p tag and now our code is correct so we have two different paragraphs okay we can delete this some text we have two pieces of text uh, and we created the paragraph tags to contain to keep these two pieces of, of text together and look what this uh, p tag have, uh, has done to our result between these two paragraphs we have some kind of margin so we have some kind of space between them and this is very default uh, it is a default behavior of the paragraph uh, tag uh, because every web browser have some styles built in the browser so if we are using uh, p tag or any different tags that we'll learn uh, in a minute uh, some web browsers will show some styles for it so we can just check that you can see that this p tag it's blue on in, in the middle but we have this orange ish uh, colors above and below this blue and this blue one i cannot uh, go with cursor there so so you have to look on the screen uh, so these two 
uh, orange lines that we have uh, are representing over the margin. Uh, do we have the margin between the top and the bottom of this paragraph? And the second paragraph also has this, this margin uh, on the, the top and the bottom uh, of themselves. So this is very difficult, dif uh, not difficult, but default behavior of, of these uh, paragraphs. Okay, there are no uh, questions on the chat. Uh, like I said before, if you have any question about what I said or what I showed here, you can ask. Uh, we will answer all the questions. Okay, so this is the, the example of the tag, the p tag, which is made of two things with opening tag and closing tag. But we have a group of tags uh, that are only that are made of, with only one thing. So they are all uh, these tags are uh, just uh, opened, and we are not closing them. In any in any place, we are calling that tax the empty tax, because if you want, if we go here uh, in this, on this example again, we can see that this paragraph tag has some child. We call it that uh, in a front end world. We call this kind of a relationship as a, a child and a parent. So this text inside the p tag is a child. And the, uh, and the P uh, tag, this P markup, is a parent of this text. But some of tags in HTML has not any, any parents, uh, has not any child, sorry. So we uh, cannot put inside this tag anything. We, we cannot put them, put there uh, any, uh, any different and other uh, text or different tags inside. And the very good example of it is uh, HR tag, uh, which is not the human resources, uh, but this tag is uh, responsible for create a line, just horizontal line. And we, and we can use this tag here between these two paragraphs that we uh, created before. So we can create this angle bracket HR again, angle bracket. And you can see that between these two paragraphs, now we have a line. We have paragraph, some space, line, some space, and again, the paragraph. But this tag is empty because we cannot uh, put any of other information inside, inside this line. So we cannot create just in plain HTML, of course, we can do it in a CSS, but in a plain HTML, we cannot create a line with text inside. What happens if, uh, what happen if I write a text here, some random letters? As you can see, these random letters are just below this HR tag not inside the line or the, or on the line, but below. So this random uh, letters that we have here are not related in any way to this HR uh, markup. These letters are just letters in our HTML file, but like I said, we have no relationship between this and this HR. These are all uh, just the siblings of each other, yeah? but not parent-child like we have here in this P uh, markup. And we have uh, other uh, empty tags, like we, can, we used to say uh, for, for, for it. Uh, for example, the IMG. So we have tag for image. Uh, this also is an uh, empty tag because the image in the HTML you cannot have any childs, so uh, children. So we cannot put some text on an image uh, with uh, just plain HTML. Of course, all these 
things and all the all the uh, I forgot the word uh, restrictions of stuff or something like that that uh, HTML is, are giving us. Uh, with SCSS, we can we can do it. So we can create a line with text. We can put some text on an image and stuff like that. But on the plain HTML, we are not focusing on that. On HTML, we are just creating structures of a data that we want to show uh, to user. Okay, let's move on to the next subject. What is the structure, uh, document structure of uh, HTML language? So I showed you some kind of some of some examples of uh, HTML tags, but we have to, if you want to create a website, we have to use very specific tags at the beginning of the creating of the file. So in the first place, we have to remember that every HTML uh, website uh, should be uh, placed in the HTML file. So uh, like we have uh, files, for example, for Excel or for uh, PowerPoint presentations, all these files have very specific extension. Uh, so for example, for a Word uh, file, we have this docx extension. For example, for a PowerPoint, I think is a pp T, PPT, I think. This is a, some, some name of a file, dot PPT. This is a presentation of a PowerPoint. Uh, very basic text file is a TXT extension. And with HTML, we have HTML extension. So we have some name of the file. And uh, this is, uh, in many cases, just index. So we have index dot HTML. This is the very basic name and extension of the HTML uh, file. And this HTML file uh, has to uh, has uh, some very specific structure. Here, here you can see the all the structure. This is the basic structure that this HTML file should contain. But now we will talk about every single line here on this uh, on this uh, snippet of code. So first of all, we have a document uh, document declaration. The first line, the very first line of our HTML file uh, has to be declaration of a document. So we have to provide an information for the web browser, what kind of document this is, what kind of rules web browser should apply to this specific document. And here we say for, our web browser that our document is HTML. But look all this uh, very specific tag that we are using here in all uh, HTML language. We have this angle bracket, exclamation mark, doc type word. This is uh, some kind of uh, default and restricted file that we all only want to use here in this specific moment. And after that, we are specifying the type of document that we are creating. So now, uh, nowadays, when we have HTML in version five, this is the most common uh, the version of HTML that, that, uh, that is used the, on the whole internet around the world. We are just, we have very simple uh, uh, job to do is just to write HTML. That's it. Uh, and web browser will know what type of rules and what kind of uh, what kind of uh, document are we are we are presenting to to this web browser. This is quite important because without it, uh, our web page can be misunderstood uh, for browser. Uh, Browser can be misunderstood our our document and show very weird things and uh, not render the whole website in a proper way. 
So this is the uh, declaration of document. If we declare it, uh, this uh, doc type thing, later we have to declare a language declaration. So we have uh, the main tag of the HTML documents that is called, yes, you, you guessed, it's HTML. So we have this very basic HTML tag that we have to put inside this tag everything that we have on our website. So every single and other tags that we are creating will go inside this HTML uh, markup that we created. So here we have example that we have HTML and here we'll go all the content that we have we want to uh, present to a, to a user. And this uh, HTML uh, declaration and this HTML tag, it's a specific tag because we can provide also an attribute. We will talk about attributes in the next slides, but here we want to uh, just uh, just say about it uh, a little bit because this is very important and this this kind of um, this snippet of code that we have here it's uh, it's not correct in the uh, in one hundred percent is not correct uh, uh, because this HTML tag it's not containing any attribute. We have to provide an attribute that is called lang attribute that is uh, telling the website, the web browser, sorry, what kind of language are we using uh, on this application, on this website, and so on. So we have to provide information of the language of the website. A language and also uh, will be good to provide what kind of country, uh, what type of language uh, this is uh, all about. So we have two things here in this attribute inside the tag. You can see that we here opened this tag. Uh, yes, we have this angle bracket, HTML, we have space, and later we have lang uh, equals, and in, and in uh, quotes, we have this some kind of code. So these two letters, or the lower case is a declaration of language. So here we have the English language, EN. If we had, a, for example, Spanish, we have ES. We have dash. And we have on the uppercase two letters also, but this is the declaration of the country. So here we have English, United States. Uh, if you want to, for example, have the English for Australia, we want to provide the specific uh we'll just uh, provide the specific code for australia or for england uh, or for for example ireland and so on so on so uh, here we want to provide this kind of thing uh, and this is very important to provide the language declaration we don't have to provide the country declaration but we have to provide the language declaration, so these lower cases uh, letters. Uh, for example, if we had a Polish language on this website, we will just write here PL, and that's it. Okay, what's next? Next, we have the head section. So we have this first line. This is the doc type, document declaration. We have HTML declaration with the language declaration, but the human language. And next, inside HTML markup, we have the head section. And the head section is very specific one because all the things that are inside this head section, so here, what I'm, uh, what I'm showing you right now, these things are not presented to user in a direct way. What, what do I mean? Uh, all the things that are in the head tag or head markup are the some kind of 
settings of our website. So we are uh, in this head section uh, telling to web browser what title is uh, for our browser, uh, what title should, should be presented on our browser of this website. What kind of uh, encoding web, web browser should use to show our website in a proper uh, in a proper way and so on and so on all the th settings that we had we want to provide to to user we are including in this in this section for example if we want to prepare our website to be shareable on the facebook or the twitter for example uh, facebook and twitter requires uh, from us to provide in the head section some descriptions of the website, some URLs to the uh, heading images. Uh, we have to provide a title of the website and stuff like that. All the things uh, have, has to be inside this head section, in the, inside this head tag. And if we provide these things, when someone is pasting this link to our website, to our blog, on the Facebook or on the Twitter, Facebook or Twitter is getting all the informations uh, from uh, from the uh, from the head section from our settings that we provided in uh, in the in the head section. Uh, okay, I hope that. You can see my screen and hear me because Zoom showed me some message. If anyone can write on the chat, if everything is okay. It's all good. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what kind of uh, settings we? Uh, okay, thanks. And uh, what kind of settings we have to provide to this uh, head section? Uh, like I said, is a for example page encoding. So we have very specific tag. This is the meta tag, uh, and this uh, meta tag uh, is uh, is having this char set attribute, and we want to provide the setting for appropriate encoding of our website, and why encoding is important, uh, and what type of encoding we should use. In most cases, like uh, the presentation is saying, it's a UTF-8. This is very basic encoding that here in Europe will work uh, very good. Maybe in some uh, Asian countries, we had to use different encodings, but here, here in Europe, this will be all good. Uh, and the default setting uh, of the web browsers is just UTF-8. Uh, this is the standard nowadays. But if we don't have this UTF-8 encoding, all the country-specific characters uh, would be misunderstood. And for example, in Polish language, we have some kind of, we have A letter, but we have also, an, uh, we, we, uh, we say it in Poland, O. We have O letter. And this is the A with some kind of comma here below uh, this this letter. But we, if we don't say set this uh, encoding thing, this letter would no would not appear uh, on the web browser. So this is very important to uh, be sure that this encoding is is set. Of course, if you want to use another encoding, here is a. a uh, link to uh, to uh, the best documentation of the internet of the HTML and the CSS, which is a MDN a web docs. Uh, Mozilla Firefox is creating this Mozilla uh, Foundation. It's uh, creating this uh, this documentation. It's very very good. So you can write uh, reads something about it here on any different uh, sites that are talking about encoding 
here in uh, front end. Okay, so move on to the next thing. It's the page title. So this is very important because we want to show to users uh, a specific title of our site. So we don't want to here on the browser when we have uh, this card or we have the window that's only single website on this web browser. So we, we don't want to show for user uh, URL of our site. We want to show them some kind of title of, of this website, of this application. And th this tag, this title tag, it's uh, just made for that. So inside this title tag, we have to provide some text. And this text will be shown on this card on our web browser. And that's it. We will try this uh, in the exercise that we'll do uh, in a second. Yeah, and this, uh, what is important that we uh, don't want to type them there uh, more than 65 characters, because uh, like you can see, the card of the browser is quite short. Uh, we cannot provide their very long text because this text will not fit inside this this card. So that has to be short. Uh, it's up to 65 characters only. It shouldn't be longer. Okay, so we have the first exercise of our uh, meeting, of our work workshop. Now we'll begin to uh, create our landing page that we uh, showed you in the first slide. So what this exercise, uh, what we what we'll do in this exercise? This exercise is saying that in index HTML, in the head section, we have to add the title tag with the following content: space travels. And the expected result is that we want to uh, open the web page. Uh, and on the card of this uh, website, we want to see the space travel travels uh, text. We can open this page here. Click, uh, just click on this orange uh, uh, orange button, and we can see that on the card here above, it's only the URL of this website. But we want to show there the space travels text. So on the left side, we have editable uh, file. This is our HTML file that we will use uh, on this workshop. And we can here below this comment, provide this title uh, markup. So I will open the title uh, tag, angle brackets, title, angle bracket. And you can see that this editor added for me the ending of this uh, of this markup of this tag so i can i don't have to think how to close it or uh, i don't have to remember to do it because this editor just did it for, for 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 me and many editors that you will use for example visual studio code from microsoft uh, sublime uh, or brackets or webstorm from JetBrains. These are uh, editors for the code that can provide such of these uh, uh, features, like just auto closing the tags of the each HTML. It's very, it's very useful. Okay, so inside this HTML tag, we'll provide the text space travels. Title space travels. In this editor, we don't have to save this file because it's auto saving. And we go to this website, refresh. And you can see that here on this card, we have space travels text. So that what we provided here is here on this, on this card. If I just change it, for example, just, just for example, do something like this and go to this website and the refresh page. I have these random letters here in this uh, in this uh, card content. 
Okay, so the first uh, first uh, exercise is done, uh, but you can you can asking why this website is looking so bad. But uh, like this this exercise is saying, we are just in the first phase of developing this landing page, so that looks completely different what we uh, showed on the presentation before. Uh, but we will. Uh, step by step, go to uh, return this original view and original uh, project that we showed on the first slide. Okay. What is the next thing? Okay, so uh, to sum up this part of the presentation, uh, we know what the HTML language is. It's a markup language. It not it's not a programming language. We know that the HTML should be uh, should start with this specific specific letter, a specific line, that uh, declarating document. Next line should declare HTML and declare the language, the human language of this website. Next, we have the head section, which is containing all the settings that we have for our website. And the next thing that we will talk about now, it's the body section. And the body section, it's this part of the website that it's shown to a user. So if we want to show something to the, our user, we have to use the body, uh, the body section, the body tag, and put every data, every information inside this, this tag. This is the main parent of all things that we want to show to users. All of the things inside the body, of course, if we uh, not specify that in a different way on a CSS, for example, hide it or uh, just make it, uh, uh, just make it, uh, oh, Transparent, yes, this is the word. So if we don't make the thing transparent, uh, all the things in the body section will be displayed in the browser. And what we can put inside this body section? We talked about the tags, that HTML is built with tags, and we have a lot of different tags and a lot of markups that we can use and we have indeed a lot of tags, but we can divide them in the three groups. We have inline elements, we have the block elements, and we have inline block elements. And we will talk about them uh, now. First, we have the inline elements. And what are the inline elements? Uh, like the name is suggesting, Inline elements are just put it in line, just in one line. If we use these tags that are in the inline group, all the text that is inside these tags are going to be in the one line. And this is the good example of that. We have strong A, B, E, M, and I, M, G uh, tags. And all these tags, oh, here we have a span, sorry, span tag. And all these tags are in the inline group. And if we put in HTML code like this, we'll have result like here below. So we have seen that the P tag, if we have two P tags, like we had in this example, this paragraph these paragraphs are below each other, right? But this strong A, B, E, M, and span tags are in one line. And these tags have something, uh, are doing some special things because the strong tag is making the text inside the bolder. Uh, the weight of the, of the text is bigger. Uh, it's not just... Uh, a normal weight, 
uh, it's it's just bold like we in the uh, word editor for example clicking the b uh, on the toolbar we creating a bolder text the same is with the strong uh, strong tag here in uh, html a tag is creating a link so this is the case when we want to uh, give a chance to a user to be redire redirected to different website when he click or she will click the the link so the a uh, tag is just meant for that and we will talk about it uh, in, in next slides as well. And the B tag, it's quite the same thing as a strong, but nowadays we are uh, we should use a strong tag because the CEO, uh, no, not CEO, but CEO of this uh, of one of the websites, it's better when we use a strong tag. The, the web browsers and all the Google bots that are uh going through all the internet are looking for this uh for this strong uh tax and text inside and making it more uh you know just they are reading the strong they know that the part of this text that is made with the strong tag it's more important than the rest of it oh yeah uh this em tag it's a text with italic style, so with cursive. And the spam, this is a very generic and default element, default tag that is doing nothing. It's just in line, but in, in HTML, uh, this tag has not, uh, has not uh, any uh, default style. So like you can see, this is just a text, but we are using the span for uh, CSS things, and this is very useful, uh, useful uh, tag. And we can, for example, use this strong uh, here in our in our uh, example. So maybe just get these two words and put it inside the strong tag. So we can try what will happen if we do it so here we begin with strong and look look what happened if i didn't uh, close this tag i started here and this tag has no uh, is not closing and all the text that we had in our html document is now in a bold weight and we don't want that because we want to bold just very specific things so we have to close it and we close here after the elite world so here we can close it and now we can see that text is uh, rendered in a normal way but our two words here are stronger and all of all, of course all the text is uh, in one line we don't uh break the line here that's very very important okay we have uh, of course a lot of different uh a lot of different tags that we can use but we don't have a time to mention all of them next next group is the block element and we used the block elements element before because we used the p tag and the p tag is a good example of the block element and block element it's uh, this kind of element that always try to have 100 percent of the width of his parent so for example if we have here oh, this is a great example very basic but great we have here the paragraph and this paragraph started here and ending just here when my screen is ending. So the block elements, all the block elements, always try to be 100% of the screen or 100% of the parent. 
because we can have a situation that the parent is smaller. For example, we provided in CSS uh, very specific rules that said that this parent will be, for example, 500 pixels uh, uh, wide. And uh, the child inside this parent uh, that is blocked, for example, the paragraph, we have 100% of this, of this element, that means 500 uh, pixels. And we have a lot of uh, different, of course, a lot of different block elements, but the very basic one is a div. Div is very generic and most used uh, block element, which is, uh, this element has not any uh, styles, included in the web browser. It's just a block element that we can use for many different things. But we have other uh, elements that is, for example, H4 or any different H because we have H1, H2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. This is the heading, the elements. If the number is greater, uh, it's lower, then the bigger the size of the text inside. So H1 is the biggest. H6 is the uh, smallest one. And this is also uh, the block element. So it will be on the 100% of the parent. We said about the paragraph. Here we have an example as well. And also the block elements are the UL and LI. And these are uh, elements that you can see here below. The lists, un unordered list. This is UL. And of course, a lot of different uh, different uh, block elements. On this workshop, we will use elements like divs. We will use the footer, h1 and h2. We will use a header, and we will use a section. So we will we will use only a few a few of them. And the last the group of elements are the inline, uh, inline block elements. So the inline block element is the combination of the two. Because I, have, I, I think I forgot to say that inline elements have very specific thing. We cannot, uh, we cannot say to inline elements to be for example, this uh, this white or this height. We cannot say that to uh, to the inline element. Inline element is also always the size of the inline element is always the thing that he this element has inside. So if we have a lot of text in inline element, the size of this uh, inline uh, tag or markup uh, will be just what is inside. But in all the block elements, we can provide these dimensions. So we can say you have to be uh, 300 uh, uh, pixels width and, for example, 500 pixels uh, on the height. But like we said, these block elements always will be uh, below each other. But the inline block elements, for example, images, have the these two things inside the one. So elements are inline because images are showing next to each other, and images are block because we can specify the dimensions and the sizes of these images. And we have here the example we provided that width of the uh, our image will be 300 and height of the uh, image will be 414. And we have two, the same pictures, and these pictures are shown by each other, not below, but side by side. And uh, we can use this block, inline block uh, rule in many different uh, ways. For example, to show the buttons just in uh, next to each other, not the below uh, themselves. And for example, uh, if we're using the inline block property in the CSS, 
uh, we are allowed to create this uh, in, uh, inside uh, margin of the uh, side of this of this button. So, for example, we can uh, make look like this uh, just to create this space between the sides of the uh, of this of this button. But that we can do only if we use the inline block property. Okay, so let's move on to the second exercise. We will open this exercise here in the browser. And we want to uh, create uh, boxes. Because our website, uh, on our website, we will have these three kind of boxes. And this on this exercise, we are going to prepare a, a HTML structure of one box. So we will insert this box inside the div in a section. And here on the left side, we have a section, we have a div, and inside this div, we will put a box. And the box, the structure of this box will look, look like this. So on this div, this div, this element, it's only for containing all the content for, for one box. So we want to use this uh, tag to use this element just for, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, we want to put everything inside this, uh, this box, this bag, for example, right? So we want to separate the boxes from each other. And uh, the way to separate them, the, the easiest way, is to put them, put all the elements. So image, heading, paragraph, and the button in a very different elements. OK, so we can copy and paste it here. OK, so we have this one box in the place that we want it to be. So we have box with all the things that we that we wanted. And if we, and we, if we refresh website, we can see this text that we provided, uh, the paragraph, the button. And of course, we don't have an image because we didn't say what kind of, what type and what image we want to, we want to show to user, but we will do it in the next next exercise. Now, it's, now this uh, exercise is, is done. We prepared the first box of this, of our website. Okay, we said before about the attributes of the elements, and we can uh, say and we can see that uh, all the elements of the HTML, all the tags and uh, um, elements, like I said, can have an attributes. An attribute, it's a name value pair uh, separated by the by the uh, equals character and is using for setting additional tag parameters. And if we can, uh, how to explain that. So if we have a opening tag, just for opening tags, we are using that, we can provide some kind of attribute, but what type of attributes we can use? The, the, this is a very uh, tricky question because uh, different elements have different attributes that we can use, but uh, all the elements that we are using in the body section can use some kind of class attribute. And this class attribute and value inside this attribute, uh, like we can see here, we have name of attribute that is very that is specified on the documentation of the HTML. We have equals, uh, uh quotes and inside these quotes we are providing the value for this attribute and the value of attribute it's in our hands so we can write here whatever whatever we want but uh this class attribute will connect our in this case paragraph 
with the CSS language. And we will talk about it in a minute. But we have many different other uh, attributes that we can use. For example, in the input element, an input element, it's a element that we are using inside the forms. If we are using input element, the HTML will render for us this kind of box that is readable. We can write things inside this uh, this uh, this element, and here we have input that attribute type is set to a text, and this is very basic uh, thing. But if we log into any website, uh, we don't want to show everyone in the room our password. So type of the input can be also the password. And HTML taking information from this attribute and rendering the box, the same box, but every letter that is inside is just a dot, just a circle not the text. So, of course, uh, uh, under the hood, we can read this uh, text. So we can log into websites, but people on the, in the room cannot see uh, what we are typing inside this box. And this is very, this is just one case of using the attributes of the elements. And like I said before, uh, every element not maybe every element, but many different elements have a lot of different attributes that we can we can use. And for example, in the next exercise, we'll use src attribute for the image elements. And this src uh, attribute will uh, we will can uh, provide the link or the path to images. So we will we uh, will uh, tell uh, the browser where uh, the browser can find the image to show to, to our users. Yeah, yes, here we uh, have this, this exercise, what I told you about. So we want to add appropriate attributes to elements inside our box. And we have two things to do. First, for an image, so we have this image here on the 24th uh, line, we want to add src attribute and we will specify the path to the icon. And we want to uh, also specify the alt attribute. And this alt attribute is also required on the images then this old attribute describing what is on the image. We want to use it because not every uh, people, not every person can see the web pages. Uh, some people have some disabilities and we want to uh, provide for them the description, what is on this icon, image and stuff like that. So this is very, very important. This is required. These two, uh, these two attributes are required. OK, so let's move on to this uh, part of exercise. We have this 24th line. We have IMG uh, tag. And we are going to put SRC equals uh, quotes. And inside the quotes, we will put this path. Uh, why we are using images slash icon dash startup dot png because if you look here on the left side we have index html this is our main file that we are editing and we have also the images file uh, the file uh, directory folder and inside this folder we have four files and we have file that is called icon dash startup and we want to show the browser that if we are here, so with that slash means we are in this place, in this file, go to 
images folder. And inside this folder, so we have again a slash, inside this folder, pick up icon startup. Start up PNG. Pick up this file because we want to show the user this specific file. And of course, the alt attribute alt equals quotes uh, icon of starting rocket, for example. And now, if we go to the website, I will open that in the new page. We can see that we have some space, more space here between the heading and the background, but there's no image. Oh, that's a uh, tricky thing because the image is here, but like you can see, I'm just holding that image. This image is white. This icon is white. So on the white background, we cannot see white things, uh, but the image is here. It's working, it's okay. Okay, so the first part is done. The uh, second part, we want to provide a href attribute to a, a element. And like I said before, the A element is the element to that is clickable. And we can, and when we click the element, this A element, web browser is looking for a href attribute. And if it's provided, uh, the browser will, will redirect us to this specific website. So here on the left side of the, uh, on this line, we will provide this href attribute equals quotes. And inside quotes, we can put whatever site, link to whatever site we want. Uh, for example, https, it's a uh, colon slash slash and for example, we can here uh, go to coderslab.pl. Just for example, we will change it to a, a hash a sign, hash character, because we don't we don't know where this uh, should uh, redirect us. But for example, I can show you how it works. Here now we can we can see that this read more, it's now in a in different color. It's underlined it, and the cursor is different. We have this uh, hand, and when you click it, here we go. We are on the Codos Lab website, and we can go back to this to this exercise. So uh, just delete this Codos Lab and go to like uh, exercise saying we'll use this uh, hash character. Okay, so this exercise is done as well. Next one. Now we will talk uh, in a few words about the CSS because our time is uh, very short uh, of this of this meeting. Uh, but we will talk about the CSS. Uh, so, like we said before, HTML is describing the structure right of the page, but CSS, it's describing the appearance of the page. So we want to, with the CSS, we can style our site. We can choose whatever element we have on the site and make this element bigger, smaller, uh, with this color or another, with a background or without a background, and so on and so on. We have a lot of things that we can do with CSS, uh, sky is the limit, as, as, uh, as uh, someone is saying. So yeah, CSS have a lot of things that we can do uh, on the HTML structures. But what is the uh, basics of the CSS? So every, uh, we are saying that, uh, we have to prepare very specific code to make the CSS working. So for example, if we want to make all the paragraphs in a very specific color, for example, red, we have to do a few things. 
first, we have to select specific element on the website. Uh, and our and where we are going to write these things, we are going to write these things on the difference file. So we are using HTML files for HTML, and we are using CSS files for CSS. We are separating things, so we are not doing everything in one in one place, but we we are separating styling from the structuring of the data. And inside this CSS file we are going to uh, select specific things, specific elements of our website. Here in this example, we are telling the CSS language that we want to select all the P, all uh, P elements that are in HTML, HTML file. We want to apply um, some set of rules some kind of properties that we, we, we say. Here we have a carrying brackets. So we know that we have eight in, in HTML, we are using these angle brackets, but here in CSS, we are using the curly uh, brackets. And these curly brackets are containing the key and the value pair. So we have the property, we are calling it property, that's these green ones are properties. And name of properties are very uh, are described in the, on the documentation of a CSS. We cannot here invent our things. We have to use what the documentation is saying and write it without any mistakes. And for example, we are have a property color, and like you 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 already know, the color property is for text color of our. Uh, of our uh, paragraph or any different uh, element. We have a co uh, column here between the pair, uh, between the key and the value, between the property and the value of the property. And here we have this value of property. And the values are connected to the, the properties. So if we have a color property, we can all, uh, only use a values that are a colors. For example, we can write red or blue or green. And we have tons of ways to describe a color. This is not the only one. But you, you see, we have colors, and only what we can write is a color. We can write uh, that we cannot tell the CSS language that we are be specifying color, and later, for example, specify the size. So for example, co color, uh, com, uh, colon and for example 100 pixels that will be wrong here we have another example this is the font dash size and it's a uh, font size uh, will uh, make our our font bigger or smaller whatever we we choose and here we providing the 20 pixels of height of this of this text and uh, you have to pay attention to the end of this line. So we have property, value, and the semicolon. And this is very important. Every line of the CSS uh, key value uh, pair has to end with the semicolon. And if we apply this all set of, of all these rules to the P element, we have this kind of effect. Our P our text that is inside is bigger. It's 20 pixels in height. It's red. And the border of this text is two pixels width. It's solid because we have solid line and it's blue. So this is the example of how the CSS is uh, look, it looks like, it, uh, how uh, it, it looks and uh, every property that we are using in uh, CSS is looking the same. So we have the same syntax, property, column, value, semicolon, that's it. But uh, in example that we showed before, we just selected all the elements, all the P elements that we have 
on our website. But what uh, if we want to uh, pick up just specific element, just this one text, just this one section? We can use something like classes. And I told you about it uh, before that we have uh, this kind of thing. We have a classes inside the HTML and CSS. If we in HTML provide the word, the attribute class, and write here some specific text inside, for example, content, and in CSS provide a dot, and later we are copying the same text. So we have content here and content here, but dot at the beginning. These two things are connected. So our H2 and P elements, because all of them have this uh, content class, will use all these rules uh, when the uh, web browser will be rendering this, uh, this thing. So all the things looks exactly the same. They are blue, they have border, uh, some margins, paddings, and, and stuff like stuff, stuff like that. And this is the most common way to specify the elements that we want to style. And we will use these classes in the next exercise to uh, specify what styles should apply to what things inside our, our uh, landing page. OK, so here is the last exercise that we will do today. Uh, we have a few things to do. Uh, okay, so our website is not looking uh, so good, but we'll change that. We have here on the left side style as CSS uh, file that is filled with all the needed uh, code. Uh, so it's prepared for, for us, but we have to, but Okay, we have the style file, the CSS file, but this CSS file is not connected with our HTML file. I mean, the, this all, all styles that we have here, they don't know what to uh, what to choose from our HTML. So we have to do very specific things. First part is uh, content centering. So every main element, header, section, and footer. So we have header, section, and footer contains a div. And yes, footer has a div, section has a div, and header also has a div. And these divs inside these elements are responsible for centering what is inside them. So we want to add container class to every direct div inside these three elements. So here, on the 15th line, we are going to uh, extend our div with class attribute that equals container. Our section also has a div, and we are doing the same, class container. So we are using the same class in the two different elements. And now we have the third element in the footer, and we want to do the same, div class container. And in our uh, styles here below, we have this class. So we have dot container, that means class container, and we have some rules for this class. And these rules are making our website look like this. So everything is now centered. Everything is now uh, in the middle of our screen. And uh, we are seeing more of the background image that we provided here in the header, in the header section. So we are doing a very good, good, good job now. OK, but later we have uh, three columns. Now we have only one. But in the next next exercise that will be your homework, you will do uh, you will multiply this uh, this boxes and uh, and prepare to complete the website. 
but now we will uh, prepare for that. So for the section, we want to add class boxes. Okay, so we have this 20 uh, line section class boxes. To div containing element from our column, add class box. So our one box should be contained in a class with this name, so class box. H2 should have class box title. Class, sorry, box title. Our paragraph should have a class box content. And our button will have another attribute. We have href attribute. Now we all want to add another one. It's a class equals box dash btn. And what will happen if we provide this kind of classes? Of course, all the classes that we write here are just in this uh, uh, CSS file, of course, uh, because this not the styles are not from nowhere. We provided them here in, in CSS. Okay, refer to page. Yay. Our website is going, it's looking uh, better because now we can see the image. Our text is white, button looks like button, and uh, things are going good. And the last thing we want to do is to change the font color. So here inside this CSS file, in the 10th line, we have a uh, we want to provide this color. We want to force the white color for all our website. So all the texts inside our uh, website will be white. So color, column, uh, column. We can provide this white color in a different ways. For example, write white. But we also can write it th uh, this way. So it's a hashtag f f f. It's a it's a, a white color in a hex uh, in a hex way. So this is the different way of uh, write numbers and letters. And this will change the color of the headers to white. Okay, so uh, we just uh, ended all the exercises for, for today, for today's workshop. We have the last thing that is a Flexbox. And this will be your uh, homework to do uh, in this evening or to, in the next day. So just uh, I remind you to uh, save this link to the Scodio website. And now what you will do you will read about the Flexbox. This is the very specific technology uh, inside the CSS that will uh, that will uh, give you the chance or or give you the uh, way to put elements in any order that you want. So without with a Flexbox, we can manipulate elements and uh, put them in a very different places in our site. So uh, we can put elements in columns. We can uh, align the elements at the end, in the center. We can center them also in the vertical lines or the horizontal lines. So uh, this uh, flex box is very, very useful and it's very good technology that we are using in, in CSS. It's, of course, it's built in. CSS, and uh, we are on our courses talking a lot of about this this flexbox. So we are making tons of websites with this technology just to be just to know this uh, very very good. And the exercise that you will do exercise five, as you can see, is now uh, prepared. Uh, 
is is quite prepared just from from the last uh, last exercise and all all you can you have to do it's to uh, correct these few things for example give this div uh, container class for a footer also give the container class and all the exercise content you have here on the right uh, right side you have to multiply the boxes that we created change source of this uh, images change the description attribute of image and you will see that how the flags inside the css is making these boxes uh, next to each other side by side not below each other because all the elements that we are using here are divs so this these elements are blocked but with uh, flex technology uh, with this flex property we can also make these boxes go to go side by side so thank you very much for this uh, for participating in this uh, in this workshop that was a pleasure uh, for me uh, if you have any questions you, uh, you can now just ask me or a Kate that is with me here on this uh, on this meeting and we we can uh, answer that if we we have don't any if we don't have any questions uh, that's it for today uh, thank you very much again and see you i hope see you soon uh, in the next time